Women started wearing their hair a la Cleveland. Postcards with Francis pictures were sold. But the worst, the absolute worst invasion of my wife's privacy was that manufacturers were placing her pictures in advertisements for their products. Her face or name appeared on everything from soap to liver pills and even underwear. Things got so out of hand, a bill was introduced in Congress making it a crime to, quote, publicly exhibit, use, or employ the likeness or representation of any female living or dead who is or was the wife, mother, daughter, or sister of any citizen of the United States without the consent in writing of the person whose likeness is used. Well, the bill was never passed. <laughs> we needed peace and time to ourselves away from the limelight, so we moved to a pastoral farmhouse about two miles from the White House. It was called Red Top. Uh, we also lived in the mansion only during the social season, December 1st to March 31st. Both Red Top and our vacation home in Bourne, Massachusetts on uh, Cape Cod were strictly off limits to the press. And Frankie did her best to be the type of wife I wanted. She remained out of politics, except for an occasional sitting in the Cong Senate or Congressional Gallery to report back to me firsthand. She made the White House a home and gained the deepest affection of the White House staff. In my own way, I did try to make my own statements. I helped found the Washington Home for Friendless Colored Girls and was the most visible member of the Colored Christmas Club by personally distributing gifts to poor children at the holidays. <laughs> to help make it easier for working women to meet me, I began Saturday afternoon receptions. One of the few times I became angry occurred when a White House staff member, noticing the low class of the ladies attending these Saturday sessions, haughtily suggested that I have the affair during the week. <laughs> and I replied, and if I should hold these receptions other than on Saturday, they couldn't attend because they have to work all other afternoons. Is that it? Well, the official just smiled, and I answered, then you see to it that nothing ever interferes with my Saturday receptions as long as there are any self-supporting women who want to come to the White House. <laughs> I had my own problems. One of the first things I did <clears throat> was to restate and strengthen a proclamation of President Authors which warned that any non-Indian settlers in the Oklahoma Indian Territory would be removed by federal troops. I wanted to lower the tariff, the tax set on imported goods, which upset many people. I had lobbied for the congressional creation of the Interstate Commerce uh, Commission to regulate railroads, which upset industrials. And I had to veto pension measures, which upset veterans. In fact, I vetoed more bills in my first term that had all the presidents who had come before me, 300 or so for me, and a total of 132 for them. Almost all were pension bills. Well, the law at that time provided pensions for those wounded in battle and their dependents. Now people were applying for pensions who had not become disabled later on in life or who had not even served in time of war. Well, one other interesting veto was the Texas Seed Bill. Bad weather had caused agricultural stress in Texas, and Congress passed a bill to spend government money to aid and assist the farmers. I vetoed the bill, stating, I can find no justification for such an appropriation in the Constitution, and I do not believe that the power and the duty of the general government ought to be extended to the relief of individual suffering. The lesson should be constantly enforced that, though the people support the government, the government should not support the people. 